Well, family have been a bit tough on me, to be honest, and arguments. And well, with family, um, I guess you could say my mother was a bit of a black sheep. Um, my grandparents are both dead now, so I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but they were quite harsh on her. Um, and growing up, I didn't really know a lot of my extended family. I'd go down for a family reunion or a birthday, and I wouldn't know half the people there. You know? uh, and of course, the, the arguments, there was a lot of arguments, a lot of fights that almost become physical. Um, my auntie Marlene was usually the voice of reason, but then her career took her around the world. And uh, in her absence, I suppose, I kind of became the voice of reason because there was just nobody else to step up to the plate. Well, like it hasn't given me many stresses in the like in the in employment side, but relationship side it's gave me a lot. Uh, my mum has, but then other family members have been yeah a bit critical, like oh how come you haven't got a job and something. And, but my mum understands that in this area it's very difficult to find work in the Latrobe Valley. Um, well, it's probably now and again throughout the year, so fairly frequently, say once a fortnight or once a month it's brought up. I guess sometimes indefinitely. I mean, I have a good relationship with my sister and some of my aunties and uncles, but others just like, it's not that we don't, it's not that we fight, it's not that we don't like each other, we just don't have a lot of contact. Still have it. Well, it's quite hard, so I've had to seek counselling and this and that um, because for having struggles finding work and the stress it's caused on me. Just one day at a time, I suppose. Um, back to romantic relationships, uh, a lot of my relationships ended because of drug abuse and unemployment issues. I've had partners that would harass me and say, why don't you just get a job? And <laughs> It's not that easy. Uh, I've spent the last three years seeking counselling to try to get my security licence back and after receiving a diagnosis and after three years trying to figure out what the problem was, I don't even know if I want to do security anymore. So I've been trying to branch out and get into different areas but it's again hard to without experience. You know? um, I suppose my current girlfriend probably suffered the most because when we met I had just got off methamphetamine and I was quite aggressive. I never have hurt her physically, but emotionally she suffered a lot. And if she wasn't there for me, I don't know if I'd even be clean today. You know, she's been through it all with me, you know, and she's been very supportive. A lot of people don't have that support. No. Yes. I dated a girl once. Um, about four or five years ago, for only three months. She had dated uh, she, a, a, a bloke that was abusive to her for 10 years, I believe. And she would quite often attack me and say things like, I dated an abusive cunt like you for 10 years. And, you know, uh, one day I did get physical with her. I didn't strike her, but I put her in a knee bar and I said, and I quote, don't forget I was a bouncer for three and a half years. And then I went to my room and cried myself to sleep. <laughs> well, not to sleep, but I cried in my bed because I felt guilty for what I had done. And she came in and said, relax, like I was just play fighting. But I said, that's not play fighting. If you want to play fight, you tell me, you know, just attack me. And that was the end of that relationship. And again, before that, I was in another relationship and both of us were addicted to methamphetamine and I was trying to get clean, but she didn't want to get clean. And she would do all sorts of things to get her habit provided, I suppose. And that would make me pretty angry, and uh, I tried to take her phone off her once, for example, and she got very violent, and I tried to restrain her. Well, I did have a partner once who I realised after a year and a half had no intention of getting employment and I was pretty straightforward about either you, you're more helpful around the house and the garden or you get a job or there's no future here ultimately and it was just, you know, 
a very nice person, but it, I didn't think they were pulling their weight. And I had to go to work every day, and I think I was getting unamused. Um, a girl close to me did, but she left the relationship, so she's good now. She had to move to Melbourne. Yeah, my mother was in uh, a lot of abusive relationships, actually. Um, and for some reason would choose to stay with those men. And uh, when I was 14, I, I told her that um, the bloke that she was with, I said, it's, it's him or me, and she chose him. And so that was when I became homeless for the first time in my teenage years. And uh, my ex-girlfriend took me in, which was great, but I was a bit too boisterous and uh, people made complaints and the real estate said it was her or me. And so I had to move out of there and I went and stayed in a homeless refuge for a while. I've also been in my fair share of uh, domestic abuse related relationships, just with the, with the drug abuse. We would constantly fight about whether or not we were going to have more drugs and whatnot, you know, and it was, it was just quite difficult. And um, my relationship with my mother was quite abusive as well. She once threatened to kick me out if I couldn't get her a half an ounce by that night. And of course I couldn't, so I had to leave. I guess I never really experienced a positive relationship before that. So it, it's hard to leave what you know, you know? Uh, we like to, people like to stay with what's familiar. Um, and we, and also, also if you love the person, it's very hard to sever those ties. I had been the victim for a period of time, a couple of years. I was dominant. I was I was working at that time. It would have had some bearing on my attendance record suffering, and ultimately been given ultimatums, and I couldn't comply with them. So um, I resigned. I had an ex who was very violent, very aggressive. Three o'clock in the morning, wake up to stomping on my face because I wasn't touching her and all that type of stuff. So that really set the anxiety off even worse. It probably would have been not been as many arguments, probably at like half the amount. <laughs> probably all of them. Yeah, if we if we were both gainfully employed, we would have been able to pay all the bills. Probably. We'd be busy most of the time, and so even if we were using substances, it would have been less frequently. When you smoke all day, every day, you can't afford that habit, so you have to do questionable things to pay for your habit. Some people that I knew would steal their food so that they didn't have to pay for food, and I had about $8,000 out on tick. If you're not familiar with that term, it's when the drug dealer gives you the product and you give them the money at a later date. But I didn't give him the money. <laughs> so that was quite a hairy situation. I instead used all the product and I guess threw a party, if you will, that went for quite some time. And then I had to pay him off over the course of a year. Yes, I reckon it would have helped her maintain her issues by going to work and then sort of just staying at home all the time, thinking of every issue that she has being employed, or when she was employed, she seemed a lot happier than when she wasn't employed. She seemed like the relationship was going okay, but once uh, she got unemployed, the uh, marijuana intake picked up, the violence started picking up, and then we ended up having to end the relationship. Probably not. It wasn't a very inspiring job, I might add. I think I was going brain dead yeah. with doing it. I suppose it can affect health and this and that and the other. Like if you don't have money to go to the dentist or... Well, as I'm sure you saw on the news, I uh, just finished paying off a mountain of an electricity bill. I still have a $450 bill with Priceline for my mum's medication and I need to take my cat to the vet, which I haven't been able to afford to do for some time. I have a lot of health issues uh, that have probably stemmed from my criminal activity. I've been bashed with poles and all sorts of stuff. I've got a herniated disc in my spine, I've got torn ligaments in my left knee and 
I, I guess you can see this tooth is broken, but that is one of the less, um, I don't know the word, a lot of the teeth in my mouth are a lot worse than that one. So it's going to take some time before my dental work is finished. Yeah, well, my body's probably going to give out on me a lot earlier than some people, you know? And uh, I guess I severed a lot of ties with some really good people when I was at my lowest. So, probably never be able to make that back. I'm interested in, you know, um, the arts and environmental issues and I'm a um, registered wildlife Care, but I can't afford to participate in those things any longer because I can't um, afford the petrol to go. So yeah, it is. It's a bit. I can do things online, but I worry that something will happen to the car and I'll be able to drive to get food or go to the doctor or anything like that. Um, Oh, if I die, I die, that doesn't, you know, it's just, you know, you're out there and that's that. And the chances of dying of, say, something like a heart attack on a farm on your own are much higher than if you were some, in a, a more highly populated place, perhaps. But that doesn't really worry me, I'm a bit of a fatalist, whatever it will be, will be. She was one of our lovely customers and it was hard to hear that she was going through that. But we just offered her support and that sort of thing. But yeah, we don't tend to have what I'd call obvious, we've suspected it. But we don't, um, we don't say anything unless the person wants to talk to us and just make sure that, you know, and then we just offer our support and just tell them how to tell them how sorry they are and they're going through that situation.